due to technical difficulties, we're going to change up a little bit as we're moving on here. Uh, I would like to welcome everyone to the 2015 Garden City High School Hall of Fame. Uh, I would like to recognize special guests that we have with us this evening. Any Board of Education members that are pr present, please stand. Board of Education members. And we have one, so let's give her a hand. Also, we have some longtime education leaders in this community. I believe we have one with us tonight, Ms. Florence Wilson. If everybody could recognize Florence. In 1984, an idea was conceived whereby past graduates of Garden City High School might be honored for their accomplishments. This idea was brought into action again in 1985 with the first members of Garden City High School Hall of Fame were inducted. In doing this, it shows that Garden City High School produces graduates, graduates second to none. 58 outstanding people have been inducted into Garden City High School Hall of Fame. We can be proud to have these individuals represent us. I would like to have the past Hall of Fame inductees present tonight. Please stand and be recognized at this time. Past inductees. And we have two of us this evening. Oh, hang on. There we go. Go ahead and give her a hand. Each year we add two more distinguished graduates to Garden City High School Hall of Fame. Uh, and here's where I'm changing. Uh, tonight, uh, we are honored to induct Michael Quint of the class of 1968. Go ahead and give him a hand. and Dr. Bradley Hart of the class of 1991. I would like uh, to have Linda Roth to come up and introduce Mr. Quint at this time.
Mike was a letterman in football for Garden City High School, a 10 gallon donor of the Red Cross. He was in 4-H. He was a voice, an Eagle Scout. He originated the International Festival at St. Mary's. I don't know if any of you remember all the good food they used to have. Uh, he was the incorporator and board member of the Volunteers Incorporated, board of directors for the Spirit of the Plains Casa. He even was on the city commission, and during his term, is when Long Park was associated. Mike was a defense attorney for many years, assistant county attorney, was a candidate for associate district judge, and in 1994, he became the district judge for the 25th Judicial District. I often complain about our laws and our rules, and he tells me, if I don't like it, get it changed. Mike's an avid reader, and I did find, when I was researching through our family history, on both sides, we have at least 97 members that have attended a school in Garden City, Kansas. They didn't all graduate because they moved away. But we have a long history here in Garden City. I think that's all I'll say about him. Anything else I have to mind, no, I'm going to do that. Not a good stuff. Huh? <laughs> I had a lot of jokes and bad pictures, but I'm just going to introduce him as Judge Michael Quint, one great guy, and even a greater brother. Well, Linda shocked me when she showed up at my house one night and said, well, they just voted and you've been selected as a distinguished graduate of Garden City High School. That's the first thing she's ever kept quiet from me in all her life. And I was utterly shocked and utterly pleased and surprised. Then it dawned on me that I was probably going to have to say a speech or something to give some great wisdom. I had a chance to borrow from Mr. Collins, who is a distinguished graduate from the past. He gave me a copy of his speech from years ago, and I looked it over and I thought, Ain't no way I can come up with something that good. So I was trying to think, what in the world could I say that would in any way be worth your listening to? And I think perhaps the more interesting thing is, is what piece of wisdom can I impart to you that makes things work just a little bit better? And I thought perhaps the thing that we need to step back and consider is that most of the people who are successful, whose pictures lie on that wall, are people who have families that they were born into and families that they adopted or created. Now the born into is real easy. All of us have those. Just trying to figure out, and Linda was going through some of the detail work, but I've got um, 40 aunts and uncles, 64 first cousins, and then I lost count. I, I don't know how many second, third, and fourth cousins. Apparently 90 of them at least went to school, so that's good. And I suspect the Hart family probably goes just as deep into the community. I didn't even get a count. Uh, Florence, who I consider as an aunt, but I don't think she was on that list necessarily. But it is interesting that we have family that we use as support, that guide us, that teach us, but the other part of having a great family background is the family that you adopt. It's the family that you grow. And I'm not talking about my six kids and the food they eat. I'm more talking about places like this, where I, 
one of the best things that I think has ever happened, and I know it uh, was controversial at the time, but it was keeping a high school as a single unit rather than dividing into two high schools. And I like that idea so much because it put us all through the same experiences. I don't know if you have had quite the experience I have with the community. We have to have the greatest, most cosmopolitan community in the entire state of Kansas, and it works. And this particular institution is part of the reason that it works so well. We make our family as we go. I know in the last month or so, just as an experience of where we've been, I know Judge Pierce has the same experience as I do. We've had interpreters brought in to help us with community members who spoke Spanish, Arabic, Somalian, Kishi, which is a dialect of the Guatemalan Indian tribes. Uh, we've had uh, individuals who spoke Oromo from Africa. We have perhaps the greatest melting pot in the entire state of Kansas, perhaps the entire Midwest. And it works because we all come here. We come to the high school to learn, to learn how we, we interact with all the cultures, with all the people, with all the friends that we have. And I can't imagine a greater lesson to be learned than the chance that all of us have come together and we go the same direction, no matter what language we speak, no matter what our past experiences is or are. And I want to thank you for your help appreciate the chance to join those people whose pictures are up against the wall. But thank you very much for your, your help. Uh, I would like to have Vivian Frankhauser please come up this time to introduce Dr. Hart, and we're hoping that technology works this time. There he is. There he is. Or was. It was my great pleasure to nominate Brad Hart, someone I've known through my friendship with his mother, Caverly Hart, since he was a KU student in the early 90s. Rock chalk. I've always been impressed by Brad. He's extremely humble and kind-hearted. But after doing the research online to complete the nomination form concerning his professional career as a chemist, I am beyond impressed. After recently seeing the movie, The American Sniper, I now like to think of Dr. Brad Hart as an American sniper in a lab coat, which he probably doesn't even wear a lab coat. The work he has done to protect Americans at home and around the world from all forms of weapons of mass destruction, war zone explosives, and homeland security does so much more than shooting one enemy at a time to protect our troops, like the Navy SEAL in the movie. His work to develop in-the-field sensors and tests for explosives has undoubtedly saved countless lives and limbs of soldiers. After graduation with a Ph.D. from grad school at the University of California at Irvine, 
Brad went to work for the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory as a research chemist, then spent two years as a division chief at the U.S. Defense Intelligence Agency in Washington, D.C., where his mother fretted and prayed every time he was sent to Iraq, Afghanistan, or Russia on top secret missions he couldn't tell her about. Then in the fall of 2011, at the age of 39, he was hired back to the Lawrence Livermore Lab in the San Francisco Bay Area, but this time as the head of the Forensic Science Center. On the personal side of Brad's life, he's a devoted husband to Becky and father to toddler son Flynn and infant daughter Harper. I don't know if GCHS has ever selected a scientist to the Hall of Fame before, but as one of the very top experts in his field at the age of 43, I think he qualifies. And I thank the committee for selecting Dr. Bradley Hart, a third generation Buffalo, to join his 90-year-old grandmother, Catherine Hart, who was the local awardee in 2004, on your prestigious wall of honor. I only wish you could be here to speak to you, and especially the graduates, in person. But it's my great pleasure to introduce, via technology, thank heavens it finally worked, Dr. Brad Hart. Hi, everybody. Um, and thank you very much, Vivian. and I appreciate the, your kind words. And I'm, I'm very sorry that I can't be there in person. Um, it's uh, something I wanted to want to be there, and I, I think it's a great honor. And, and um, you know, we'll use technology to our advantage here, hopefully, and, and, uh, and to hopefully really stays online. Um, when I first heard about the award, so my, mom, my mother called me at work, very excited one day, and, and, uh, and gave me the news. And um, I got to admit, it was a I got to admit, it's a real surprise. It's not something that I had expected. Um, I had attended my, my grandmother's um, induction years earlier, and um, and so it was, I knew what this was all about, but it was, it was a surprise. And I sort of immediately started to think back to um, my time in Berkeley City, and particularly in school, and those experiences. And uh, and I started to do some math. I, I didn't do the kind of math that I spoke about. I, I haven't done math on my family. I think it, it is actually quite large as well. I, it would be an exercise to do that. Um, but I did start to do some statistics, and I, and I started to think about school in particular. And it turns out that if you include the time that I, uh, I spent in college and, and, and graduate school and postdocs, it turns out I've actually spent a little bit more time in school after I graduated high school than I did um, since kindergarten through, through graduation. A little bit shocking, but I hadn't thought about it earlier. I mean, I've uh, stuck through all those years. Um, but, but when I think back to those times, I think about all the education and the time I spent in school, the, the experience I had and the relationships I made in, in high school in particular, but in the earlier years as well, the teachers that influenced my life and, and, and other educators really had the greatest impact um, to, uh, to my, where I am now. And I think my career going forward, I, I think about the lessons I learned um, throughout those years and from those people, uh, people like Floyd Manning, um, Monty Moser in high school, uh, were incredibly influential and, um, and had an incredible impact. Um, you know, as Vivian mentioned, I've traveled quite a bit and I've done a bunch of things since leaving Garden City. Um, I've had some really interesting experiences and undoubtedly met some incredibly interesting people. But when it comes to the kind of influence that really, I think, steers your path through life, it's those, the educators that I interacted with um, throughout my school years in Garden City, um, in addition to, of course, to my family and our extended family, uh, the Lindenbergers, um, and, and others that, that really made you a part of your extended family, as Judge Jones mentioned, are, are really what, what makes the difference. And Garden City is a special place. Um, I know I'm be away from town already for this, but I still consider Garden City my home, and it always will. And um, I am incredibly thankful for this honor. Um, I thank Vivian for the nomination. I thank uh, my family, of course, for their support, and my wonderful wife and, and children. And um, in particular, I want to thank all the educators who, who really made
made me part of their families and helped to help influence and steer me down the right path to get me where I am today. So thank you very much. I appreciate the honor. And um, I'm happy to share with my, my grandmother and co hall of Famer, uh, Kathleen. And um, I, I appreciate it very much. And, and thank you. Thank you for coming to the Garden City High School Hall of Fame. The class of 2015 would like to invite you to the Garden City High School commencement exercise that will be held tomorrow evening, starting at 7 p.m. in the gymnasium here on Garden City High School campus. Uh, please stay and join us for some punch and cake. And thank you, and have a good evening.